Hi, my name is JC Park. I am the creator of the Back to the Suture.org and also the writer of the book Back to the Suture. Today, the topic is the flap folding suture. When you place the implants in an area like this, you may place the mid crystal incision or slightly lingualized incision. Sometimes if you are periodontist or if you want to leave the soft tissue uh, to the adjacent teeth, you may place a very small flap design called paramarginal incision. Anyway, the problem is when you place the implants and when you connect the healing abutments, the soft tissue on the buccal aspect, if you do your best to try to tug the soft tissue underneath the healing abutments, but since the healing abutment is very smooth surface, the soft tissue will tend to climb up the healing abutment and you will lose the soft tissue volume on the buccal aspect and also you will lose the keratinized tissue too. So how can we prevent it by changing the suture technique from interrupted suture to flap folding suture? I will show you how to do it. Now this is how we place the paramarginal incision. Away from the margin of the tooth, adjacent tooth, we place a very small uh, flap. The mid crystal horizontal incision can be uh, slightly lingualized, and the vertical incision will go in parallel to the margin, gingival margins, a slightly. Uh, slightly curved and also you may use your left hand to see where the incision line is if you press down the soft tissue will show you where the incision was before now after you place the incision my favorite tool the urban knife can be used the urban knife can go along the incision line and properly cut along the incision and you can use it using the uh, leverage action and slightly slightly lift off the flaps without any tearing that's the key without any tearing you may be able to lift off the flap now you may take out your periosteal elevator and then continue continue lifting off reflecting the flap now this is the paramarginal incision now we are ready to place the implants and the system that i'm going to use today is the dentium and the fixture size will be 3.6 and 8 millimeter in length so using the lindemann drill I check the positioning of the uh, implant drilling site, buccal lingual and medial distal. And I slightly, slightly go into the cortical bone. And I move around and evaluate the positioning, which is the ideal or should be moved slightly to buccal lingual medial distal. But I think the positioning is not bad, so I will continue all the way to the 8 millimeter in length. So it will be a pumping in and out and in and out motion. Now we are already all the way to the final drill, which is a 3.6 millimeter drill. And I will go 8 millimeter in depth. If it was a real human situation, I would check the bone quality, the density of the bone. But since this is the plastic model, I have to uh, perform the drilling all the way to the counter sinking drill. I have to completely remove the tension from the uh, marginal bones. Now we are ready for the implant placement. Remove the soft tissue cap by twisting 
and you will see the implant fixture inside. You put the mount drive into the fixture, slightly rotate, and then you will see the engagement of the fixture. And in order, in order to uh, prevent the fixture dropping into the mouth of the patient or dropping to the floor, I usually uh, lift it upside down and then I slowly remove the cover. I am ready for the implant placement. The torque and the speed is a 20 RPM. And then I slowly, slowly tilt it and finally check the path along the medial distal and buccal lingual and if I am really sure about the path and then I move on to the implant placement. Since this is not a real uh, human patient you will see that a lot of noise is coming from this tension of the bone. Since the tension is too strong now I'm going to use the hand ratchet in order to properly sit the fixture slightly 0.5 and 1 millimeter subcrassally. So this is the uh, recommendation from the company because the internal type implant is usually expected to be placed subcrassally. Okay, implant is now properly seated. And I'm going to connect the healing abutments. There is no need for the um, GBL bone grafts. And I'm going to use, can you connect the healing abutments. And sometimes you may experience the dropping of the healing abutment to the drop uh, the, uh, to the floor or to the uh, patient's mouth. So in order to prevent it, I use my thumb and index finger to grip the screwdriver. And I always extend my middle finger to support the healing abutments. By doing this, you will never drop the healing abutments. Now I'm ready for the connection and using my left hand, using a periosteal elevator, I provide a support and I keep rotating until I have a hard feeling, hard end feeling of the healing abutment, which means that it's tightly connected. So this is the end of the surgery. And now we have the problem. Now, this is the situation after implant placement. You see that the large soft tissue is on the buccal aspect. Because it's already tightly sealed on the uh, buccal uh, lingual aspect and medial distally, since it was a paramarginal incision, you may remove by cutting this buccal soft tissue and you may have a beautiful primary closure. But this soft tissue can be utilized if you fold it to the buccal aspect and stabilize it underneath the healing abutment, you will see that large quantity of the soft tissue is staged positioned on the buccal aspect. Let's imagine if it heals like this, you will see a huge band of keratinized tissue and the soft tissue volume on the buccal aspect, which can guarantee the long-term success and aesthetic success of the implant fixture. The problem is, if you, if you place two interrupted sutures, and I will show you immediately, this is the result that we will have. Now let's see what happens if I apply the sutures. This is the simple interrupted sutures. I'm using the Castro Viaggio needle holder, and this is the five a uh, four point zero nylon sutures. Uh, usually use the 6-0 or 5-0 for the implant surgery, but because it was the educational purposes, I wanted to clearly show the suture. So this is a little bit, little bit wide. This is a little bit wide uh, silks. Now, no matter how hard you try, it is very difficult to stabilize the soft tissue underneath the healing abutment, right? Because the soft tissue tends to come back on top of the healing abutment. 
the soft tissue uh, loves to climb up the healing abutment. Healing abutment is a very smooth surface and your soft tissue will climb up eventually. Now this is another interrupted suture and the medial aspect. Okay, I come here and I come out on the lingually. Carefully rotate along the curvature of the needle. Okay, now we have a tearing of the lingual tissue, the palatal tissue. So you have to fully engage the soft tissue, otherwise you will uh, tear up the margins of the soft tissue. Okay. Now we are ready for the second interrupted suture. And this is the common situation that you will see after two interrupted suture after implant placement. Did you just see that the climbing of the soft tissue on top of the healing abutment? It is very difficult. It may look like this, but after a couple of hours later, this soft tissue will climb up and your patient will come like this after 10 or 12 days, uh, 14 days. So you lose the volume on the buccal aspect. You lose the keratinized tissue due to the necrosis and the healing will not be ideal. So how can we prevent it, the soft tissue to climb up the healing abutments? I'm going to recommend the flap folding suture. This is how you do the flap folding suture. First, you imagine folding the sutures, right? And then you engage the buckle flap by coming in and also immediately you come out of the buckle flap. Do not engage the lingual flap, only engage the buckle flap in medial or distal aspect only. And then you go underneath the lingual flap and you come out and you engage the huge amount of the lingual flap like this and then just like doing the mattress suture horizontally three or five millimeters away you come into the lingual flap and you come out like this and you will see that there will be a silk in horizontally away from the implant fixture and finally you engage the buckle flap like this and you come out just by uh, when you scoop the ice cream you use the scooping motion and you engage the soft tissue like this and there will be two parallel silks along the healing abutments and they they press down the flaps like this now we are ready for the final throw and knots. You may use the surgeon's knot or you may use the square knot, it doesn't matter. But when you finish your tying, you will see that the flaps are quite pressed down and folded to the buccally. And you will see that it does not come up because this silk and these two silks provide the pressing down vector along the flaps and they are nicely stabilized. Do not worry about the vertical incisions here because they will heal immediately without any scar but you will have a huge amount of the soft tissue and you will save a lot of keratinous tissue and you also save the papilla here. So this is the flap folding suture that I really really love these days.